We're back with singer-songwriter Jacob Muno. Jacob, as you shared in the first half of the interview, the struggle with infertility with your, your wife, Allison, and yourself, um, and then going on this great trip to El Salvador and meeting Sarah, your compassion child. But when you came back home, you started thinking about possibly adopting. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and uh, we thought about adopting from El Salvador, actually. Mm. Uh, not Sarah, she's got yes. a family of her own, she's good to go, but we, we thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could adopt internationally? Mm. But we knew that that was gonna be a long, possibly five year wait, yeah. which might not result in an adoption, mm. which I don't think our hearts could handle. So we started the process at home with an agency and, um, and just, yeah, which involved a lot of things, it involved a lot of uh, questionnaires, interviews, mm -hmm a course that you have to take to become parents. Mm -hmm. And I always joke with my friends, like, we're the only ones who take this course, you know, to become parents. You guys <laughs> didn't have to do this. we all should take Maybe the course, right? Maybe we should take the course. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we learned a lot, though. And, and we learned they could be waiting for a long time for a match. Mm. Uh, and so uh, we thought, well, we'll just hang in there and see what happens. And that's when um, nine months later, Interestingly enough, yeah. nine months, significant yeah. time, uh, we got this call that uh, we we're there was a possible match. This little boy b was raised in a in a foster home in Hamilton, mm -hmm. and would we like to go meet him? Yeah. And so we went up there, up the mountain, and uh, in Hamilton, and and there he was in the picture window, this little mop of blonde curls, this <laughs> little big million dollar smile, and he was just kind of waving at us. And the door opened, his little hand grabbed mine, he pulled me in, you know, to his world. How'd you just melt? Did oh, you yeah. just melt at that moment? Well, yeah, it was, it was overwhelming, right? Because we're meeting everybody. We're meeting the foster family for the first time and a wonderful Christian couple who have been looking after him since he was born. And uh, we, we met his, um, his little brother. And um, right there, on the, as I'm playing with him on the, on the floor, right on the picture uh, and, the, and the television, I saw my name in the bottom left-hand corner. Mm. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah. Because I just met these people. And I said, oh, yeah, we were listening to the satellite radio through the television, so they must be playing one of your songs. Mm. And uh, they turn up the volume, and it's that song that I was telling you about, wow. End of the Road, you know, about waiting for children, playing at that moment. And that's when, you know, I just looked at my wife with tears in her eyes. We just were like, wow, mm. this is it. This is the moment that God has chosen to speak into all of that unanswered prayer, mm. you know. And I think about that, and I think about when we decided to adopt this little boy and to adopt his little brother uh, a year and a half later, um, we thought about all the kids who are around the world praying that God would rescue them from poverty, mm -hmm. from despair, and uh, how uh, we can be their answer to prayer mm -hmm. through that and uh, through, through sponsoring them through compassion. And so that's been my kind of mission ever since, mm -hmm. is as well as being a dad, is to, be, is, to, is to see if we can get some of these kids rescued from poverty mm -hmm. because they're praying every day that God would prove that he's real and that he can step into their s story and change it. And uh, he changed ours, so yeah. we, we know for a fact that that's, that's what he's in the business of doing. And, and now you have three kids. And now, now we have three, so get this. So when we adopted Simon, we found out they had a little sister. Mm -hmm which I was like, oh man, wow. how far is this going exactly? You know, like I'm just an independent singer songwriter. Yeah. We can't have eight kids, you know? <laughs> but uh, we were like, oh, of course, you know, if, if this little girl needs a soft place to land. And so shortly after that, she, uh, she came to join her brothers. And so we've got three kids, you know, that are separated by maybe a year and a half kind of thing. So it's pretty, it's pretty miraculous, mm. you know, what God has done in our family. And we're thankful every day for, for that. Yeah. What are some lessons that you've learned through this? And you know, as I read at the beginning, there's so many families that battle through infertility. Mm -hmm. And what are some lessons or some hope that you can give some of those families that are watching? Well, first of all, I would, I would say to those families, you know, it, it's hard and there's yeah. no, I mean, our success story isn't us. I don't want to just brag about what, you know, what's happened with us. I realize there's for every one of these stories, there's lots of stories that end in heartbreak mm -hmm. and that's really hard. And I think you've got to find a place where you can accept whatever the outcome is mm -hmm. and you can accept that God is good no matter what sort of apparently happens in your life. You've got to take these things that we're holding on to, these dreams, uh, which we hold in a clenched fist sometimes, mm -hmm. and you've got to release them. Mm -hmm. And only then can God put something new mm -hmm. into those empty hands. And um, that was certainly true with us. When we finally released the fact that we wanted this many kids in this time, he put something beautiful and unexpected yeah. into our hands. And that's, that's what he loves to do. And when you sit around the dinner table with Allison and your three kids now, do you just marvel at, at what God has been able to do? You have oh, yeah. three mouths to feed yeah. now, Jacob. <laughs> oh, I know. 
<laughs> don't, yeah, don't remind me. Yeah, it's uh, every morning I make their I make their uh, lunches, so uh, it's a it's a pleasure. It's an honor to to get to have them all in our family. And I love that they have each other yeah. too. You know, whatever they think of us, <laughs> you know, they got each other and they love uh, they love being together. Mm. It's, it's awesome. So. Well, we're going to hear that song, Sarah, in mm -hmm. just a couple of moments. But if people want to get your music, mm -hmm. how can they do so? They can get it at uh, jacobmoon.com, or I've got this cool little USB. Yes, uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, Guitar-shaped USB where it has all the songs that I've ever released. Wow. And so if they become partners with my music for as little as $5 a month, they get all the music that I've ever made. And they can get that uh, through the support tab at my website or through fan.si slash Jacob. So awesome. That's that. Thank you, Jacob. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thanks. God bless. Stay with us. We'll be right back.